it's a moment of jubilation, but also a moment of great sense of responsibility. Jubilations because we want to share this award with those that have worked so hard, including the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organizations. Uh, and of course, this award coming in the name of Mr. Jack Dio, who himself devoted a lot of his effort and energy on African issues. But also for the many farmers, you know, if you think of those in Africa that are working, using handheld hoe, using modern technology, trying to produce food for the people of the continent. And so we dedicated to them. And uh, of course, the sense of responsibility is that uh, there's still a lot to be done. Uh, when you look at the potential for Africa, we haven't even scratched a quarter of it. And so we have just begun. And though we accept this award, we know we still have a lot to do. In many fronts, right from the beginning of what we call Mobutu Declaration, Africa Union started with the focus of increasing investment in the sector of agriculture. We have also expanded this scope to say it's not just enough to increase investment, but we must also now look at other challenging issues that accompany it, uh, particularly looking at how we can encourage trade, how we can also bring other sectors, particularly encouraging the farmer to improve the technology and also to bring international community so that we can have agriculture as an entry point, first of all, for poverty reduction and poverty eradication, but also as an opportunity for growth. And what we have also seen is the fact that under what we established as the comprehensive Africa Agricultural Development Program, it has a unique feature that was not there before, that under this platform, you have the private sector, you have non-government organizations, you have international community, and you have also governments who sit around the table to identify problems, come up with the solutions, and work together towards, you know, pushing the agenda of agriculture. The first one is for having put agriculture as a priority. The second one, of course, is bringing in a framework for mutual accountability, that people can come around the table, and also pushing on the international agenda to bring the aspects that a farmer cannot address, like climate change, that it can be incorporated in, in, the, in the issue of agriculture, but also to improve on international trade so that agriculture can get better market access, which has not been the case hitherto. The unsung heroes are those women, some of them carrying babies on their back, using a handheld hoe, tilling land, and uh, producing crops, some of which may not reach the market because there are no roads, there are no systems that can be enable them to, to reach the market, but they are feeding their families. But there are also many that have come around to support these uh, unsung heroes, that in a way they are also heroes, those that have brought them the technology, those that are organizing markets for them, those that are giving them new improved methods, because a lot of food is lost in Africa, uh, you know, that rots on farms, that also enable them to be able to extend more with what that they produce. And I think you cannot just isolate one angle, but to me, these are the clear, really unsung heroes. From the African Union perspective, we have agriculture as uh, priority number one, as I said earlier on, because we see it from two points of view. Majority of our people in, Af in Africa work and live off agriculture. So if you are going to talk about poverty eradication, 
this is where investment has to be. The second one is we see agriculture also as an entry point for industrialization because when you improve incomes in agriculture, you create a bigger market for industry. But also agriculture produces raw materials that go into agriculture, but also consumes products coming into industry. And this is one clear desire for the continent to see both agriculture and industry grow side by side. But beyond that, Africa offers the biggest opportunity to feed the world because when you do projections for the future, if you think about 2050, you will be having a population of close to 9 million billion people. Africa has land and has the capacity to be able to produce for the world. But of course, we must also address emerging challenges that are coming, like climate change, because we see if this is not addressed, these opportunities will become even much harder to achieve.